Hello, everyone. Welcome to News Now, the Belmont Journal's daily update on what's going on in the community of Belmont. I'm your host, Roger Colton. I have with me today Franklin Tucker, the editor and publisher of the Belmontonian, Belmont's online source for hyperlocal news. Franklin, there was a presentation recently about what would happen if the override proposed for the spring uh, elections is not passed. Can you bring us up to date? That's right. It is the uh, $6.4 million Proposition 2.5 override that the uh, Board of Selectmen uh, put on the ballot and will be supporting uh, uh, this April 6th. Um, and, and, and on Thursday, the Warrant Committee, along with the Select Board, uh, held a meeting. And what they, and what they presented was a, a, a basically stark contrast, with, uh, a real stark contrast with what residents will have before them at that April 6th election. And it was what would happen, what, what would the town's position be with an override and without an override? And uh, the, the select board and the Warren Committee have already presented what, an over, what they would do with the override money. And uh, that is, you know, they would keep basically services uh, continuing at an at a, at a increase, uh, especially at the schools where it's needed. Um, the school would add 10.6 um, uh, uh, full-time equivalent uh, positions, um, including four teachers at the middle school to add, in, you know, four teams. Um, uh, so to really uh, uh, decrease the number of people, the, the number of uh, the size, um, the average size of, of, of classes. Um, the, 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 go ahead. What, one of my takeaways from the public forum the other night was that it is not a town versus school situation, that there are impacts on both the town side and the school side, if you will. That's right. I mean, we did see, um, in fact, uh, over the, uh, a number of years, we've actually seen a, a, a some uh, a nice uh, little pops of uh, of, uh, re of uh, revenue to the town, such as uh, five hundred thousand dollars in capital uh, uh, disposable capital, um, which will be then used to fix infrastructure and things like that. Um, a social worker at the senior center, a project manager um, to uh, service the portfolio of the town, um, um, and then there'd also be a building specialist. Who would then service like the new buildings, such as the, the police station, and especially the high school? You need somebody who has a lot more than just you know turning on a switch. You need somebody who can really um, uh, put um, uh, um, things together <laughs> to make them work efficiently. Um, and um, and the schools, of course, would get uh, like I said, ten point six new uh, teachers, and um, uh, and they would um, have uh, their own social worker. They do not have a social worker right now throughout the through the, at the high school. Um, they uh, they would have a director of diversity. They would expand uh, teams. They would have a math specialist, and and, and also for a special ed, they would have a, a director. So it would help uh, keep on. Uh, uh, an upward trajectory, as they say, uh, at the schools. Um, now, go, now, of course, there's that opposite side. What if it doesn't pass? Well, it really is um, a stark. <laughs> it really is a stark uh, option uh, because with a no override for fiscal 22, you basically will have to fill a 5.7 million dollar deficit. Now, about two million dollars of that will come from uh, additional free cash that will be used. Uh, it would be uh, basically the, the no um, uh, if, a, if, if a no on the override happens, you'll have to fill a five point seven million dollar deficit. Uh, One point nine million of that will come from free cash and then another three hundred fifty thousand dollars will be a reduction in OPED. But you would have um, uh, three point four five million dollars uh, to try to uh, fill. And that would be split 60 40 between the school and um, town. So the school would look at um, somewhere between a $2.1 million um, uh, deficit that they would have to cut. And the town would have a $1.3 million deficit or $1.4 million deficit. Uh, just basically, you know, everything that they would have been hoping for, for both sides, the town and schools, they wouldn't get the new um, uh, teachers, the 10.6 teachers 
or in, on the to town side, the facilities manager, the procurement manager, you'd lose that half a million dollar discretionary cap, uh, capital fund, and uh, you'd also lose a social worker. Um, but on top of that, there'd be a police officer who would be pink slipped, a firefighter who'd be pink slipped, uh, a building inspector who would have to be let go. Uh, the DPW would lose two laborers and you'd lose a lot of overtime. But at the schools, you would also see, uh, uh, you wouldn't see that 10.6 um, uh, uh, positions this year. But on top of that, you would lose 11 positions, um, uh, existing teachers and staff. And, and, then, and they would have to be eliminated uh, where the need is. So uh, the elementary schools would be hit really hard. They would lose seven uh, basically instructors, the middle school would lose one, the high school would lose one, but class sizes would go up, you'd lose programs, less activities, uh, tech support would go away. Um, uh, and all the gains that the school really put through since the last override in 2015, those gains probably will be all wiped out in just that one year. And you're talking about next year. One of the messages that I was hearing the other night involved not fiscal year 2022, but the following fiscal year. That's right. If, 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 uh, if, a, if a second override is, uh, if, if the next year in uh, 2022, uh, an override is also, uh, what would happen is if we don't have an override now, next year, next, uh, next April uh, in 2022, for, for fiscal year 23, we would need an override of eight to $11 million, or we would have to, uh, and if that doesn't pass, we would have to fill a, a five to $8 million gap, uh, which would really devastate um, um, uh, town services and school um, uh, and, 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 thing, and things that would go to the schools. You would, you'd literally be looking at uh, closing down the Leonard Street uh, fire station, you would uh, uh, look at uh, uh, numbers of uh, uh, police officers uh, uh, being laid off, teachers again. I mean, if, if, if you're laying off, you know, if, if $2 million is laying off um, 11 teachers, um, what does, you know, uh, um, if, if they have, let's say, if they have to um, uh, save $4 million, that's, you know, you can just make, you can just figure out what the math would be, you know, and that would affect everything. I mean, you wouldn't have theater, you wouldn't have any activities, you wouldn't have sports. It's, it's just a, a devastating thing. So if you don't pass an override this year, the, the 6.4 million, you're going to have, you know, an override between eight and 11, closer to the, to the 11. So um, if, again, um, do you really save anything by, by voting against the override? I mean, that's what the, that's what the, the town and the schools are saying. Now, there are people who are saying, look, we have to really think about this. This is, you know, this isn't as flushed out as it should be. Maybe we need a year where we just, you know, you know, go without the override and see where we are after that, you know. But I think, you know, these are the professionals at, at Town Hall and at, this, at the school district, and they're saying these are the numbers, you know, facts are facts. Did people talk about or ask about the bond rating uh, and what impact uh, <laughs> an impact of a no vote or a yes vote would have on the bond rating? Yes, it was, there was a very interesting uh, discussion about that, saying basically, why do we need a triple uh, a, 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 a triple A rating, you know, the, the gold standard? You know, maybe we can do without that because, you know, as one person said, if this isn't, a, a, you know, we're, we're keeping free cash, you know, uh, which affects the bond rating. We're keeping free cash still in our, in, in a, we're, we're pocketing some of that free cash. Well, let's not pocket that free cash because this, if there's, if there's a crisis, it's happening now. Let's take that and put that into the um, budget. Um, but as, as I believe one person from the Warren Committee said that um, having a triple, uh, having a, a triple A bond rating is an advantage. So, you know, it's not a symbol by saying, hey, look, we're really, we have a we have a gold standard, you know. It's nothing like that. It really comes down to where you're saving money because you're always will need um, you'll always need to go out to the bond market. You'll always have to borrow, no matter you know, to just raise part capital of, to raise capital. It just happens every year. You save money by having that. You know, it's it's not it's not something that that people are just wishing and hoping that they can have so they can brag about it. Okay. Well, the Belmont Journal will keep you up to date uh, between now and Election Day 
on ongoing news about the proposed override, arguments both for and against. Let's close the door on that. Let's talk about tennis courts at the Windbrook. Yes, um, well, we have a second uh, public meeting, um, uh, a Zoom meeting uh, about the tennis courts. And, and, and this goes back to when this, uh, the, um, the high, this goes back to the, the design of the high school, uh, middle school and high school project. Now, middle school and high school project is so large, they basically had to take up a lot of land. And, um, and part of that land was the eight tennis courts that was at the high school. Everybody knows it was at the parking lot. Uh, that's gone. Um, that's not, uh, that's going to be now parking and fields. So uh, when the uh, tennis community and the high school uh, boys and girls tennis teams learned about that, they said, well, where are we going to go? We need, we need courts. And, they, and the town basically said, look, we understand that. We'll try to get you courts over at the Windbrook. And the reason why you need to more than four courts is because there's five games whenever you have a match. There's there's five matches, two two uh, two double, three singles. An interscholastic match. That's right. And also, if if you have a tournament, you know you need five. And right now, there's four at at the Winbrook. Now, there was an earlier public meeting, and that's when the ton tennis crowd and, and the tennis team and and all the supporters of tennis came out and they said, "Look, we need we we really need six courts." You know. Uh, because when we have practice, we want as many people playing as possible. We don't want to just have varsity practice because we, we do have freshmen and sophomores. We need to have these people playing. Um, then we had the second meeting this week, and it was the neighborhood. And the neighborhood came out in force, basically, um, you know, maybe this is a pejorative, but uh, they had uh, a number of NIMBY uh, 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 defenses, and they were saying, uh, you know, you destroy our sight line, uh, it'll bring trash, uh, it, um, it, it's a safety issue, uh, it shouldn't be here. And, um, and the REC uh, Commission uh, debated this, and um, after uh, some thought and uh, some compromise, they decided that they will recommend to town meeting uh, one additional court, so that, that would add five courts, and it would it would continue to have a green space between the tennis courts and Joey's Park, so people can come in, and it's not as intrusive as six. So that's where they stand now. And to make clear, the question of tennis courts at the Winbrook is not a budget issue because it comes out of CPA money. That's right. The money's already been, the money was already approved at last town meeting, and, that, and it was just basically. Uh, people wanted to make sure that uh, the neighborhood and the tennis people were all represented and see how much how much they could spend. And, you know, I, I mean, the money was there. They wanted to see if they could have two courts or, you know, they just want to know what the feeling of all the community was. Uh, let's uh, talk about the tennis courts at the high school. Yes, the, 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 the proposed or the uh, so, what happened is uh, on Monday. Um, at the select board meeting, there was an innocuous uh, list of, um, uh, uh, Patrice Garvin was just giving a list of uh, what the articles were going to be at, um, at uh, town meeting, you know, uh, something that, you know, the, the select board has already, uh, vo you know, voted on. They said that we're going to present these articles and she was going down the list and they're all, you know, basically what you know. And then she just said a little thing and she said, oh, by the way, we're thinking about a you know, getting money for a schematic design for uh, the new rink. And um, the surprising thing is, is that no one told anybody in the public and they didn't tell Adam Dash, one of the select, one of the select board members. And he was like, what are you talking about? And then uh, what happened is that uh, Chairman Roy Epstein basically spilled the beans and said, you know, we received this information from the, um, from a representative from the uh, middle and high school uh, building committee. They had the designs and um, they said, you know, maybe you can look at it now because the because um, as you remember, back in May in, in November, uh, a deal that would put a private partnership, a, a, a private public partnership, to build a rink and a half failed, and they said it was not viable economically. So everybody, everybody kind of heard in the background, maybe there was some kind of interest, you know, to do it on the town, but there was no, nothing that came out formally. Now we understand because of what happened on Monday and what was revealed by many uh, people, <laughs> including Patrice Garvin and uh, Roy Epstein, is that 
since early December, there's been an architectural firm, you know, coming out and looking at this and, 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 and they're going to have to be paid and who's paying them. And it really caused a kerfuffle because Adam Dash had nothing to care. He had, he had no idea what was going on. And, and, you know, if you're saying that you're going to be able maybe to put five tennis courts at the high school, then why are we looking at the Winbrook? You know, so he says, you know, what's going on? Who's paying for this? And and it and it was a kind of a it was kind of a I would say a mini bomb up bombshell that came out because no one knew what was happening. It was it was never in the public realm. You know, we didn't hear about this until uh, until this. You know, it just basically it just basically came out. And uh, and, and and but but the real question is is you know should we be looking at a major uh, capital project without at least telling the public? you know that we're doing something you know sure. if, if, if you have if you have uh, buy-ins from the school committee the school department uh middle school and high school building committee the town that's a lot of people you know and 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 we found out also that uh it's uh, the architectural firm is being paid by the uh, three ways by the town and by the schools and by the middle school building project so and I think, you know, if you ever if you can go back and listen to the um, uh, or just see the video, uh, you know, on Belmont uh, Media Center, you'll see, you know, just how surprised, you know, this one of the members of, of the three, one of the three members of the uh, of the select board who will be, you know, recommending this or not saying what's going on. So that's that should be that should that should uh, at least tell people that, you know, well, uh, why why did they think that this could go forward without telling the public, at least, you know, just notifying the public? It, you know, it didn't have to be a complete report. It could be, oh, by the way, you know, we we're, we, we decided to pick this architectural firm because this is a pretty cool idea. Why they had to do it on the QT, I don't know. Well, we will keep the public up to date with ongoing developments uh, uh, with this news. We've been talking with Franklin Tucker editor and publisher of the Belmontonian, Belmont's online source for hyperlocal news. You've been watching News Now, the Belmont Journal's daily update on what's going on in the community of Belmont. Thanks for watching. I'm your host, Roger Colton. I'll talk with you again next time.